Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Brent Pry, Virginia Tech, heading into 2024. Dill, you make no mistake about this program. It's one of the more dangerous teams in the ACC. And if I were to kind of sell, now I don't have to sell the Virginia Tech fans. They know what's going on heading into 2024, but selling some maybe non-Virginia Tech fans, you're getting a program going year three under Coach Brent Pry, a coach that I'm just a believer in heading into the 2024 year. You're getting a Virginia Tech team that got hot towards the end of 2023, but I think most importantly, returns the most amount of production than any other team across the country. So a team that played football down to 2023 season, a team that returns pretty much the whole team heading into 2024. And on top of that, Dill, I think one of the most talented quarterbacks in the ACC and Kyron Jones. I think this is a fascinating program, fired up to get into it. Before we do it, as always, just want to say thank you to you guys and to the Virginia Tech fans, every single preseason preview we do for this program every single year, you guys drop some gems in the comments section. I, they got me on Kelly Lawson, I think, after the 2021 season going into 2022. I, I can't thank you guys enough. That's the best part about doing this. Would love to hear some feedback from you guys, some sleepers that maybe we are not talking about in the comments section. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. A lot of fun game predictions throughout the 2024 year for this Virginia Tech program. And Dill, without further ado, let's get into this one. Let's start on the offensive side of the football. And I want to dive into Kyron Drones, where I think it's important to remember, I mean, he wasn't the back one heading into 2023. But when he took over this Virginia Tech offense and they leaned into his skill set, that's when you saw this offense kind of put it together and now getting a full off season heading into 2024, the guy kind of still designing that offense around Kyron Drones. This could be one of the better quarterbacks in the ACC in the 2024 year. I mean, when they started getting him moving outside the pocket, I mean, he's so dangerous on the run. A, he can obviously slay it when he's moving on the run, but also obviously with the legs, no doubt about it, he can make some things happen. I think you're kind of right. When they started to lean into that, and the ability from Tootin to kind of run the ball, especially on the perimeter and make good cuts off of some of those things they were doing, getting teams running outside or running to the boundary, I should say. I think you started to see that team get really dangerous. You talk about you talk about Bayshaw tonight. That what is it? I got the number down here. 69 missed force tackles in 2023. This kid is a human joystick when it gets into open space. And Virginia Tech started to do a great job in terms of manufacturing him touches when he could get out in space and Kind of circling back to Kyron Drones, going back and looking at the numbers, one, you love the 17 touchdowns, the three interceptions. What excites me about Kyron Drones heading into 2024 is there's still a lot of meat left on the bone for him to develop. I think pushing the ball down the field was something that I think he left a lot of throws. You kind of look at the numbers, 20-plus yards down the field, he only completed 20% of his passes. If he takes that step, because you look at the recipe for Virginia Tech, they want to run the football. They ran the football very effectively in 2023. Once teams start putting safeties into the box, you have some dangerous wide receivers that can work vertically down the field. If Kyron Drones can kind of complete a little bit of a higher percentage when he's attacking downfield, this offense is going to be extremely hard to stop in the 2024 year. Because again, you kind of you have Daquan Felton. I mean, he's kind of the guy I look for to be that vertical threat. And obviously, Jennings and Lane are good. Lane being more of that slot guy who does a good job working underneath and some of those routes that again set things up for everyone else like Daquan Felton. But yeah, they got to start hitting those because they were there. I mean, they had them. They can make them. They have the wide receiver talent. I think that's a big part of that offense. That again, as you kind of said, when you can hit those plays more often than not, you can you can really put some points up where if you can, it, it, it kind of is hard scoring. And it's almost like if Virginia Tech does put it together, pushing the ball down the field, it's a little bit of a pick your poison. Like if you want to leave your two safeties high, Virginia Tech with a guy like Kyron Drones that is kind of essentially just another backfield, another body in the box, so to speak, they're going to run the football effectively. If you do want to allocate some safeties into the box, you have a guy in Daquan Felton who's just really big. He's really fast. He caught for 17 yards per reception last year. He can go win vertically down the field. And kind of touching on those wide receivers, how many wide receiver trios in the ACC are you taking over what Virginia Tech has? Something that not a lot of people are talking about because they were so good at running the football last year. Ali Jennings didn't play at all for Virginia. He only played, what, a game and a quarter last year. And you're getting him back. He was projected to be the best wide receiver in that room 
that's a dynamic trio of wide receivers. I think the question is for me, at least how good is this offensive line? I think they're going to take some steps. They have some guys that have played a lot of football. They bring in a transfer in Montavious Cunningham, who's played a lot of football. And then you have some young cats. You saw Virginia Tech's offensive line get a lot better from 2022 to 2023. If they take another step in 2024, I think that's the last piece of the puzzle for Virginia Tech to have a really dynamic offense in the 2024 year. Yeah, that, that is the group I think you're kind of watching. Because, again, you kind of talk about where Kyron, some of Kyron Jones' struggles were. They were not very good in pass protection, I don't think. And, frankly, their inability to run the ball in between the tackles I thought was a huge problem. Yeah. You saw them be able to get the ball to the perimeter with Tootin, whether that was sweeps, whether that was like kind of manufactured runs, if you will, more of those swing passes they'd run. But they need to be able to have something in the middle. I think that was their inability to move guys off the ball was such a huge problem. I thought it made it hard for them to pass protect. So, again, that offensive line taking a step. And I think, again, we talk about how important continuity is in that position. When you have it, you pretty much have the whole unit backer. Everybody on that offensive line is going to have played a fair amount of football, especially at Virginia Tech and together. That's going to be a huge thing I think you're looking for. But, again, it, you also got to have the talent come with it too. So that's something I think everyone's yeah. And I, I think it's a little bit more development. And we kind of talked about this with Matt Rule in Nebraska. You saw that offensive line get better from the first week to the last week. You've seen this offensive line get better over the first two years of the Brent Pry era. You kind of figure it's probably going to get better again in 2024. Now, going to the defensive side of the football, Bill, I got to give you a tip of the cap here. Antoine Power Island, I think this was after we did our Virginia Tech preview you were doing some work with Florida, and you texted me and said, Antoine Powell Ryland, that kid can play. He emerges as one of the best edge rushers in the ACC. Now, I think the question is for Virginia Tech in that front seven, I think you have an elite edge rusher in Antoine Powell Ryland. Who else can kind of manufacture some of those quarterback pressures? But I think more importantly, the inside of the defensive line, that's probably the biggest question mark that you have where you bring in Aeneas Peebles, uh, one of the better interior defensive linemen in the ACC. Kamari Copeland's an interesting one coming from the Juco ranks, a guy that is just an animal in the weight room. Outside of that, you got Josh Fuga. He's played a solid amount of football. How deep is Virginia Tech on the inside of the defensive line where you want to be rotating those bodies, keeping them fresh? That's probably the biggest thing that I'll be watching for for Virginia Tech in the start of the 2024 year. Yeah, because you got to have it like the way their edge room is set up. I mean, yeah. Again, you have your horse, you have your Powell Ryland, and he is their leader. But again, McCray, Burgos, Nelson, they all play pretty good football. I think Burgos is a guy I'm kind of watching. I think he's kind of the guy. If someone's going to take that step and kind of be that other NFL guy in that room, I think it's him. He has the traits, he has the length, he has the athleticism. Again, young player last year. I'm really excited to see what he has. But I think you're right. At the end of the day, it's can that defensive line be physical enough in the middle? Because you have Josh Fuga, big, tough, physical defensive tackle. Peebles is more your playmaker for sure. I mean, he's not necessarily the guy you want just clogging holes, plugging yeah. in up and making. He's more of a make things happen kind of guy. But, again, you, you need to have two or three lines in that defensive tackle room, and you just have a lot of guys you really haven't seen play anymore. Really so moving on to the linebacker room, that's maybe like another question I have in terms of I don't think the linebacker play was – Great for Virginia Tech. I thought it was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah I think it's – I was trying to put it lightly. No, you just come out and say it as it is. I respect it. I mean, I'm watching that Rutgers game. You just can't be – you can't look like that. I mean, guys not getting off of blocks, not getting in the holes. I, that's one I think Sam Brumfield, the ability to add him and yeah. be a bit more physical. Because Kelly Lawson, he's good at what he does in terms of playing in space. But – you needed a bit more of a physical presence in there. And I, that's I, kind I, of what I'm going with is you bring in Sam Brumfield as your just stud middle linebacker, or that's the kind of ideal coming from middle, middle Tennessee state where he led that program and run stops only missed 11% of his tackles. He was just a dang solid middle linebacker for middle Tennessee last year. If he can kind of be that stalwart linebacker, then you can kind of get creative with Kelly Lawson, who is that's kind of what he's meant to do, right? You want Kelly Lawson coming off the edge. You want him dropping back in space. You want him doing a lot of different things. And if Sam Brumfield emerges as that all ACC level off ball linebacker, I think it gives you some flexibility in terms of how you want to use Kelly Lawson. But I think you're right. I think you want to see a big step from the linebacker play for Virginia Tech. And I think Sam Brumfield could be a guy that gives you that. He's played a ton of football coming from middle Tennessee, 
Because I don't mind the depth. I mean, you obviously still have McDonald and Keller who played a lot of ball last year. You just you didn't have that real physical thumper in that unit. And I think again, when you look, that has to be what Sam Brumfield gives them. If he gives them that, I think that goes a long way in shoring up that ability to stop the run and then like your your guys on the edge go to work and be more productive. Yeah, and take the leash off my guy Kelly Lawson. Now you go to the secondary. Really, really good. <laughs> I think this could be one of the better secondaries that we see in the ACC. It's obviously headlined by two really good cornerbacks and Mansoor and Dorian Strong. Dill, Keontae Jenkins is one of the guys that I'm keeping an eye on at that star position where you talk about another just figure out where you want to use him and how you want to use him because he can do a lot of different things. I could think that could be a little bit of the X factor for this Virginia Tech defense, especially as a guy that had 19 run stops last year, can give you a little bit more run support if that is kind of the question mark for this Virginia Tech defense. Well, that's what I was going to say because like you like the ability or their ability to cover guys up in the back end, but in terms of when you're looking at that hybrid linebacker star position that everyone's kind of playing nowadays, yep. I think you kind of like that. If it, with Virginia Tech, you're certainly getting a lot from Keontae Jenkins in terms of what he's going to do in the run because that's – that's inherently my question about what this defense can be. I look, you have your guys on the edge. Dorian Strong and Delaney Monster just don't need a ton of help, I don't think. And Monster, I think you want a bit of a bounce back here. Obviously, had a great freshman year. Probably didn't quite have the year you wanted last year, but a guy who immensely talented I think should be really good. But I think they need to rely on Keontae Jenkins to make plays in the run because that, that is your question mark. If this team can stop the run, I don't see many teams throwing the football on this. And, and another asset here is if you, you got two elite boundary cornerbacks, and if you trust those boundary cornerbacks and islands, you can start walking some safeties in and give a little bit extra run support if that is where you're. If this Virginia Tech team takes a step in the front seven, stopping the, stop the run, this team's going to be really good on defense until. So it's obviously we're a pretty big fan of the depth chart, what Virginia Tech has coming in. You start taking a look at this schedule, I think it's so gettable. And I know it kind of sounds crazy right off the rip, but Dill, I look at Virginia Tech and say, I have them on paper, on paper, favored in 10 out of their 12 games. You look at this first set before the bye week, you go on the road to Vanderbilt, that should be a win. Marshall at home should be a win. On the road to Old Dominion, a win. Rutgers is kind of a tricky out-of-conference game. We think Rutgers is going to be really good, but if Virginia Tech is – you know, as good as we think they are. If they're respectable against the run, they give themselves a really good shot because I don't know that Rutgers is going to be a team that's going to be able to put it in the air much. And, be and then you go on the road to Miami. That's one of those games that if you're a Virginia Tech, you kind of wish it was at Lane, uh, you kind of wish it was at Lane Stadium because Miami struggled on the road. But I, I'm a massive fan of Miami. I'm probably going to take Miami on paper in that game. On the road across the country against Stanford. Tricky travel game. Stanford's not a very good football team. If you travel, take care of your chickens, <laughs> you're going to win that football game. Now you come out of the bye week, Dill. Boston College, Georgia Tech, Syracuse. Should I have Virginia Tech on paper favored against all those teams? You get Clemson at home, and Dill, I guess what I would say is if you are a one-loss Virginia Tech team hosting Clemson, going to be a night game, I would think. If it's not, I'm going to be pissed. I mean, anything can happen. Again, I'm probably taking Clemson on paper, but I would love to see that environment as you host Clemson as a one-loss Virginia Tech team. You finish up on the road at Duke, Virginia, certainly two winnable football games. Still, I think there's a solid chance. And again, I think for Virginia Tech, it's a little bit more consistency. Can you see the same version of Virginia Tech, the good version of Virginia Tech every single Saturday? I think this team can win nine or ten games. And I think consistency sets the floor. I think what, again, if you're going to sneak one over against the Clemson or Miami, I think we need to see some guys emerge as like legit NFL players. That was one thing I thought for Virginia Tech last year. Is like, again, you had a, a really solid, deep overall team, but I don't know that you got enough greatness from enough players. I mean, obviously guys like Tootin had their moments of playing really great. Paul Ryland had moments, Dorian Strong. I think you need a couple more guys to kind of play more like NFL players in those big moments. That's what kind of I would say. What I would say is sorry to cut you off. What I would say is so exciting is you have a quarterback that if he puts it together and reaches it, you you failed to mention the player that might have the highest ceiling on this Virginia Tech team. That's the most fascinating story about this Virginia Tech program. Their quarterback. This is not no Wells. Like this is a, you know a guy that's just going to be solid. Kyron Jones has the ability to be one of the best quarterbacks in this conference, one of the better quarterbacks 
that we see in the country. And if he puts it together, that's when you get really, really fun conversations about what the ceiling is for this Virginia Tech program. They'll fire me up for this program. You guys know I'm excited. Appreciate you all rocking with it. Again, if you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you all later. Peace.